It's the Score North Twin Show. Oh, we got major announcement. Major Twins target field announcement. Been waiting all week for Twins news, boys. We've been waiting. Man, it's the it's the winter meetings. It's hot stove season. Yep. Speculation, rumors, big names flying all over the place. And the Twins, they teased it yesterday, mm-hmm. but they paid it off today. Massive, massive announcement. Def Leppard, Journey, and the Steve Miller Band are coming to Target Field. Keep on rocking. That's right. Do you they're have coming to? to tar- they're coming. Do you have to tease that? Like, is that like a, a part of the agreement is we'll go on social media the night before and get everyone. Oh, ge- ah, we're going to make a big announcement tomorrow. Basically, you've got a casino type show coming to your stadium. And I know that they're touring wow. around stadium. They are. They're, they're like, come on. Def Leppard. Well, but, when you, but when you put them all. You know, it's funny. These guys came. Def Leppard, Journey. And I think I it was Night Ranger, I think. I, or They came to Target Field a few years ago. I went, and it was a blast. I'm a big Journey fan. I got no so. problem with that. Just don't just make the announcement. I, I feel like Steve you can't Miller. tease that during the winter meetings, right? I agree. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> and and it, look, you tease Paul McCartney. You tease, <laughs> you know, pick, pick your big name. Lady Gaga. Yeah, throw that out there. Billy Joel. Really, Billy Joel. Billy know? Joel's fine, too. Oh, yes, but I mean... Oh. There's a fi- there's a there's a list right of like okay you know what night before we're putting it out there entertainment target field we're putting it out there this doesn't need it I not saw in 2023 Steve Miller band like four years ago at the Armory and it was sponsored by AARP and I was without a doubt the youngest person in the crowd <laughs> it was sponsored by AARP sponsored That's awesome. by AARP I love it sponsored oh man. That's hilarious. Yeah, what's what is the youngest you've ever felt? So for Declan, it's probably Steve Miller Band. About ten years ago, some friends and I were in Kansas City, and we went to see Michael McDonald with uh, Niall Rogers, the hit maker. Yeah. And I mean, and we were like, I was in my twenties at the time. We were the youngest people there by twenty five years, and it was yeah. awesome. I was seventeen when I, I went to see the Monkees at the old Carlton Celebrity nice. Room across from Met there Stadium. And I was easily by, you know, 20 years at the time, probably 15 years, the youngest person there. Do you know how old Steve Miller is? 70. Uh, yeah, probably in his 70s, right? Dude's 80 years old. Good for him. He's just rocking it. Ass. Just rocking it. Keep on rocking. Well, I mean, okay, you know what you do? You can tease the Stones. You know, Stones are on a world tour right now, I believe, or some tour. The Stones can be teased the night before. I'm cool with that. It's Mick Jagger. He's yeah. he's super old, but I'm cool with that. But really, I'd say Journey if Steve if Steve Perry wants to come back after well, 30 totally years, different, right, then totally different. Ball. Oh yeah, that's I totally love Arnell Pineda, game. but so. right. But announce Otani twins. Announce Shohei Otani. I saw your tweet, Mac. He totally trolling the twins. Performing account. at Target Field on March 28th or whenever the first oh, game. We got him. Yeah, <laughs> we got him. We got. Well, you know, I saw I saw. Um, Ryan Dempster put out a tweet yesterday that said there is now, and I don't know if he was joking or not. It didn't read like he was joking, but who knows, that there's a mystery team. There's a mystery team. Mystery Let's team. Go. It's a mystery team. Uh, it's the Twins. We're gonna score. Mystery team. That's why they're so comfortable letting all these guys go. Sonny Gray, Kenta Maeda, it doesn't matter, man. We'll get, we'll get Shohei in here. Okay, we're going to do an immaculate grid. We also will give you the latest on Twins trade talks here from the star tribune and we can react to some of this stuff bobby nightingale doing some some good insighting here down in nashville so i'll throw you guys a couple nuggets here you guys tell me what you think about this so Derek falvey said quote to the star tribune what we continue to hear on the trade front just to be very candid about this part is hey we have interest in some of your players we'd like to talk about those players but we have to wait on a few other things to happen or free agent discussions to come and pass, said Falvey. Mm-hmm. When that happens, you're constantly waiting to some degree on other teams. So I believe him at face value here that that there are trades to be had here. But, you know, there's some teams that are waiting to see, okay, what happens with the top four or five free agents. If we can't, I think teams would rather, if they can, if they can afford it, spend money on a player than give up like prospect you know, capital for a player. 
Uh, also noted here in the Star Tribune, Max Kepler and Jorge Polanco are the two Twins players drawing the most interest on the trade market, according to multiple sources familiar with these discussions. Some teams are wary of Polanco's injury history over the last two seasons. Polanco holds a $12.5 million club option for the 2025 season, as well as being under contract for 2024. Thoughts? Um, God, I would like something to take place here. And, you know, and I, I mean, yes, at least Soto's been traded to the Yankees now, so we've got some steam or a little bit. Yep. Uh, but, but my thoughts are this. Did you guys read or see anything regarding the Twins coming from N Nashville that, that surprised you in the least? Like, it sounds like all of the stuff that's been discussed and written about is absolutely true, which is Polanco or Kepler or and or Kepler, could be both of them, are going to be moved. Um, you they're, know, looking, it doesn't... they're looking for, uh, for starting pitching via the trade market, not free yep. agency, which yep. we speculate and, on. And it sounds like that that they um, they are open to the idea, although I can't tell if it's a bluff, of Varland being in the rotation. But that might be a bit of a bluff to tell teams, hey, we're fine there. We don't really need your guy. Mm -hmm. I can't tell for sure. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to be surprised. And my guess is in December or probably more likely January now, Polanco and, and or Kepler gets moved. But – that might be like they they might get a starter, but I I don't sense that we're on the precipice of like a Pablo Lopez type trade, unless I'm totally wrong here. Well, here's another interesting nugget here from Bobby Nightingale, Star Tribune. The Twins are exploring external options at first base. Alex Kirloff and Jose Miranda could form a platoon, but both players had shoulder procedures in the offseason and could be eased into spring training, so they might not be fully ready to rock and roll. One of the best on paper fits as a free agent option is Reese Hoskins. We've talked about him on this show. He missed all of last year with a torn ligament in his knee. He hit at least 27 home runs in his last four full seasons, not kind of the pandemic year. He crushes left-handed pitching and he may be open to a short-term contract bouncing back from the knee injury. Um, and, and Bobby talked to Scott Boris, who is Reese Hoskins agent who cited the, uh, uh, the Conforto contract of two years, $36 million coming off a of missed season. So mm -hmm. you're probably looking at, let's say, 18 to $20 million a year on like a two-year deal for a Reese Hoskins, which I think that leads to the question of whether it's acquiring a salary in a trade or whether it's, you know, maybe a one free agency splash. If you had 15 to $20 million to spend on a free agent, would it be a Reese Hoskins to plug in at first base? Would it be a Kevin Kiermeyer or like a or bringing Michael Taylor back to play center field? Would it be? I don't think you're in the market for some of these stars, but you could trade for a Corbin Burns who's going to make twenty million dollars in the last year of his team control with the Brewers. Like, where would you allocate a fifteen to twenty million dollar chunk if you only had one bullet to fire? Go ahead, Dex. Uh, I would probably fire it with the Reese Hoskins bet. So I like Reese Hoskins a lot. And he hasn't played, obviously, since 2022. And some of the numbers that were really, like, his walk percentage dropped, like, pretty significantly, like, 5 6% the last two years. But I do think he's due for a bounce back, and he's worth buying on here. And it was kind of a parlay. I would, I would take the Reese Hoskins bet, and I would use Alex Kirloff in addition to one of these Kepler-Polanco additions or, or a good prospect to get a legit starting pitcher. I, that, that's what I would do. I would get Reese Hoskins because I think it opens things up to trade in Alex Kirloff on top of the Kepler Polanco other prospect that could help you get a legit pitching prospect. If I'm going to go to the free agency, well, I think Reese Hoskins is the guy that I would want. What's Corbin Burns is, like? What what's that going to cost me? What what do we think that's going to cost me? Because he's good, but he's on, but he's you know he's not signed long term at all. So it's, yeah, it's it'd be one year of. Corbin Burns and I think what we don't know is are the Brewers looking to just sort of reload are they looking to I don't know I don't know what their what their situation is with if because if they want prospects I don't think you're going to have to tr for one year of Corbin Burns I don't That's think you're asking. trading a top three organizational prospect unless yeah. there's a huge bidding war I don't think the twins would do that either I agree with that so but I mean that that definitely intrigues me be because because the twins are still they're in a good position still the division's not going to be great. It might be improved, but who knows, right? Mm -hmm. And the Twins are a competitive team. 
Um, they, they certainly should be more consistent, I would hope, now in 2024 than they were this past summer. So all of that being said, I am, I guess I'm really focused on keeping the pitching staff as intact as possible. And I don't know with Gray gone, I, it's just, Kirloff's injury history makes me nervous at first base, but the paddock thing in the rotation makes makes it really dicey to me because I just don't, I don't know what type of guarantee if there's any that paddock is going to be so like a glass now or a burns for a year does intrigue me but they've traditionally hunted for the multi multiple years of team control right that's the thing you're right i don't know yes. i think and they've done it very well you know they've didn't sunny gray have was it two years of of yep. control because they right. didn't extend him right um and then obviously lopez had two years but then they they gave him the extension so no, here's right. another one, too, in terms of clearing out some money. Twins catcher Christian Vasquez is drawing mild trade interest despite the two years and $20 million <laughs> left on his deal. So the Twins tell you. Oh, Acc yeah, there's some teams. According to a person with knowledge of exploratory <laughs> trade talks, Vasquez is coming off one of the worst offensive seasons of his career. He obviously was – he did not play in the postseason because Jeffers was, was the starting catcher in all those games. Uh, but he does still have a strong defensive reputation. I think that it'd be great if you could clear out. You signed him to be your starting catcher because yes. Jeffers was not the offensive player that he turned out to be. And now the situation has kind of changed. I just don't know how many teams are going to take that. Con like how much of that contract can you get out from underneath? It would be almost a complete salary dump, right? Just say like, we, you literally don't have to give us hardly anything. We just want to get out from underneath this money so we can allocate it to a Reese Hoskins or a starting pitcher or somebody. I'd love to know what, what that um, obviously very extremely tepid interest truly is too. Right. Like you call up a team. Hey, what's going on, Derek? And eh, not too much. Um, just sort of make some phone calls. What's up? Who are you shopping? Christian Vasquez. Interested? Hold on a second here. I'll, yeah. You know, I could, um, I'll call you back. <laughs> Bang. Hey, it's tepid yeah. interest. Yeah, I don't know, like, if they're – and, again, Bobby Nightingale is covered for a bunch of different teams, so he's probably got – or at least he covered the Reds for sure, and so yep. he's he's got people in places, and he's a good reporter. And his his dad, by the way, is one of the big insiders, Bob Nightingale. Mm -hmm. So the Nightingale family has pipelines that they're extend good. into Major League Baseball, right? They're very good, yes. And you so I, I do trust this reporting, but it also could be the twins saying like, all right, hey, yeah, we got, there's a couple teams involved there's here. A bidding, there's a <laughs> yep. bidding war going <laughs> on for Christian Vasquez. With, they can't get Otani done, but Vasquez is hot on the yep. market. And then one more nugget here from, uh, from the Star Tribune here. Uh, with the Yankees moving Aaron Judge to center field after trading for Juan Soto. So the Yankees outfield is going to be Verdugo, uh, Judge and Soto, and then didn't they? They also landed. I feel like they landed the other Grisham. outfielder, uh, Grisham, Grisham, right? Yep, mm -hmm. he was involved in the trade. And he could play some center. So are they going to flip him, or is he just going to be their fourth outfielder? Or are they going to flip for Dugo? They can yeah, flip for Dugo too. too. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, but the but the Yankees have essentially four outfielders, and at least two of them can play center field right now. So that likely takes them out of the market for a free agent center fielder. Yeah. So that's sure. one less team to up the bidding for a Michael A. Taylor, a Kevin Kiermeyer, or a Harrison Bader, who could all be guys that step in and, and start for you in center field. I'm still, man, I know that you don't need left handed bats. And so, and Kevin Kiermeyer would, would be a left handed bat, but man, that guy can still play at a really high level. He's had some injury issues too, but if, if there is a way you could put Kevin Kiermeyer in center, or even like if there was a way you could get Buxton and Kiermaier in the same oh. outfield defensively at times, whoo, 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 that'd be fun. Mm. What's the what's the belief on on if Austin Martin has to be the primary backup to Buxton? Like what's what's the belief there? Because like when we talk about well, well, um, uh, Gordon might play more. It's like okay, yeah, but he is a multi-positional utility guy who I don't want to have to play a ton. He certainly can play, mm -hmm. but like, it, like is Austin Martin is sure thing is way too strong. Where do you think he ranks as far as if you go into spring training with him being the primary backup to a guy um, who you certainly would be, would be happy if he got to 100 games in Buxton? I mean, yeah, he's, I don't think he's anywhere near a sure thing as a major leaguer, right? Like he's, He's it's it's been 
three years of minor leagues for him. So he was he played in the SEC uh, until 2020 through like that pandemic season that was shortened. Mm -hmm. He's yet to really dominate any level of the minor leagues offensively. He's shown flashes and he's and he he can get on base. He's he's a hitter that can work walks and whatnot. But Austin Martin in 252 career minor league games has 14 home runs. Yeah. And I'm not saying you have to be a, a massive power hitter to play center field in the major leagues, but you know, he only has 43 doubles, for instance, in 1,100 plate appearances. He basically has two full years worth of plate appearances in the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. And he's averaging like 20 doubles per full season. So I, I still have, you know, his bat came to life in July and August and he hit a, he hit more home runs over that stretch than he had in his entire minor league career. But I, I would have major questions about putting his bat in a lineup for much more than like spot starting right now. Now, if he comes into spring training and he's a different dude and he's still young enough, he's only 24 years old. Right. But that would be that would fall into the category of hope and wishful thinking as opposed right. to like like Michael A. Taylor was a known commodity. You signed him or you made that trade for him and you knew what you were getting for the moment. Not a great player, but a really good defensive center fielder who could hit some home runs. Absolutely. You knew you were getting I mean, there's a chance Austin Martin just isn't a major league player right now. We don't know. So you'd be crossing your fingers and saying, boy, we hope Buxton can stay healthy, and we hope Austin Martin is a major league hitter right out of the gate without any yeah. major league experience. That's a lot of hope, a lot of crossing your finger. Which sort of goes back to, to the old uh, potentially Jay Cave days. Hey, Jay Cave can sub in in center field. Well, actually, how much, how much do you want to rely on that one? Yeah. Yeah, the fact that that guy, like that dude was taking – playoff at bats like in key moments for the Phillies right yeah, How yeah, yeah. Give he, played that first, he played first base for him I don't think he'd played first base a day in his life and he somehow yeah, Rob Thompson put him at first base yeah so that's kind of I mean there's so as of right now you know, basically the twins are coming out of the winter meetings here with the the list of outgoing and incoming players is still outgoing Sonny Gray Kenta Maeda Emilio Pagan and as of right now, outgoing free agents, Michael A. Taylor, Donnie Barrels, Joey Gallo, who's that's addition by subtraction. And the incoming list still is zero. So here's here's my question, too. So that the uh, the piece in the Star Tribune by Nightingale that you referred to, Phil, it was sort of built around also the fact that there is a large slew of Bally's teams, Bally telecast teams that don't know the future. And so they're all sort of mirroring what the twins are. Like yep. it's all, it's everyone being cautious. So here's my question though. Does this just continue? Like, like there's, there's no, no deadline here. Yeah. This is all well, going to linger until March. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. twins are going to be on TV. There is no question though, that if everyone else, Stella, keep it quiet. That there, there is no question that if everybody else, I, I'll come out there, um, that if everybody else sort sort of goes down this path, like you're not, you're going to telecast your games, right, or televise your games, but those games, it's not like you're going to all of a sudden get a windfall of cash. So no. I guess my question, so I guess my question is this: Does this off season of sort of nothingness just continue? Well, in the absence of like a deadline or structure. That's yes, because what yeah. what's going to happen is half the teams in the league are dealing with this TV ambiguity and this revenue ambiguity. And so those teams are going to try and pull back the spending as much as possible. But the agents and the players that are free agents sitting out there are going to want to keep pushing. So what might wind up happening is the teams that like the Yankees have their own TV deal. There's some teams that are fine financially because they've got their own like owned and operated TV situations. They're going to wind up spending how they want to spend. But there's going to be the pool of players that wants money is going to is going to be larger than the amount of teams that are willing to spend it. So that what could happen as you get closer to spring training is there might be two or three players out there that you just get a one year discount on where. All right. Well, like that was kind of the covid year, right, where there was just like, oh, I guess we'll just get, like, get Lance Lynn for, you know, whatever it was that didn't turn out great for the twins. But there, there might be a chance where, hey, the economic conditions are weird. And these guys want to report to a camp and spring training. So I, I guess begrudgingly, my client, Reese Hoskins, will just sign a one-year $12 million contract to get right and see what happens. Like, the Twins could benefit from that in a couple months from now. We'll it's going to be – essentially, it's going to be a form of unintentional, not agreed upon one with – Collusion? Collusion. Yeah. Like, they're all going to – but, but, I mean, this is – 
we keep talking about this and it feels like we're talking about it like it's going to end soon. Yeah. I mean, if they this is going to go until they find it sounds like until teams find ways to capture revenue back from telecast that currently is just not there. So and again, I don't think the team should cut back drastically because this will be solved at some point in time. I don't think the, the billionaires that own these teams are going to agree with Sports Dad here. Yeah. No, but they should. They should listen to Sports Dad, Sports Consultant. You've got many different titles. They don't listen. They don't listen and it hurts. Well, people should listen to you when you talk about Finch Home Solutions before we get to our Immaculate Grid challenge here. All right. Darn right. Dex, thank you very much. Yep. Because Finch Home Solutions, Finch, look, 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 look. Baseball's got problems. Football's got problems. You know what, though? The answer to any electrical problems in your home or elsewhere is Finch Home Solutions. Cody Finch and his team do an absolutely fantastic job. And I'm talking big or small projects. I'm talking rewiring your entire I house, which might have to yeah. be done, which might have to be done. You might need your entire home rewired, or it might be just an outlet. But you know what? When it comes to the electrical world, you do not want to DIY it. You do not want to take chances. We're talking about your families. In my case, my my wife and my dog. You know what? My wife. They're precious to me. And guess what? If I try to do something by myself, I might burn my house down. You don't want that. And Finch Home Solutions, fast, courteous, professional. They are going to make sure that your home is safe and sound. FinchHomeSolutions.com. It's a uh, new redesigned website. It absolutely is as easy to navigate as possible. See all the options and also book an appointment as well. FinchHomeSolutions.com. And a shout out to our friends over at Summit Orthopedics. Okay, if you're on the injured list, you're on the, uh, the old, they used to call it the disabled list. Now it's the injured list. You're dealing with pain. Maybe it's you see, maybe it's an elbow. Maybe it's a shoulder. Maybe it's, a, I don't know, an oblique, whatever athletes deal with baseball players. Summit Orthopedics is here. No referrals are needed. Same-day appointments. 25 locations across the Twin Cities in greater Minnesota. And if you're really hurting, they also offer walk-in orthopedic urgent care seven days a week starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. You can learn more at summitortho.com. That's summitortho.com. Okay, it's time for an Immaculate Grid Challenge. Okay, sent this to you guys. I think I think now we're, we're getting more comfortable with the landscape of, of this game. And so... I think we should all, on the days we're going to do it, let's definitely be thinking about it during the morning here. Okay, so I sent this to you guys a couple hours ago. There are some former twins that come to mind across mm -hmm. this grid, for sure. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. we're looking for Red Sox, who was a Brave, Red Sox, who was a Met, and a Red Sox Silver Slugger. Silver Slugger started in 1980, I believe. A giant, yep, 1980. A giant who was a Brave, a giant who was a Met, a giant Silver Slugger. An Astro who was a Brave, an Astro who was a Met, and an Astro Silver Slugger. Judd, what square would you like to start on here? Pick a square, any square. How about how about we start with the um, with the Giants and the Mets? Meet the Mets. Willie okay. Willie Mays. Willie That's... Mays ended his sadly ended his career with the Mets, right? Yeah, he did. He did. But I was trying to think of former Twins. And I feel like there's one former twin in particular that we are not using enough. Well, I and it's have not a great, Doug Mankiewicz. I have a great one for Astro Brave. Former okay, twin. well, hold on. Well, Judd's about to say one for this other square. I, so, I, it sounded like he was talking out loud. I wasn't sure. Nope. Giants <laughs> and the Mets. A great one because I bring this up because this guy covered a ton of teams in about 20 years. Latroy Hawkins. Yeah. Oh, the Hawk. He would also work for Mets he, and Strohs. He's a sneaky one. He's not yeah, quite really. Edwin Jackson or he's close. Jesse Orozco or Craig Kimbrell, by the way, just signed with the Orioles. He's, he's become, he could use him 100%, on here. 100%. Mm -hmm. He's great. So the Hawk, mm -hmm. I trust that. Okay. Unless we want to use him for, because he, he was an Astro, Astro too, right? Astro too, yep. yep. I got yep. There's a couple names on that one too that could make some sense. The Hawk. Point three. Point three percent. Okay. He's All right. What were, which one were you looking at, Dex? Astros and Braves. Do you guys remember Jordan Schaefer? The center fielder? <laughs> yes. Yep. Twin, former Twins center fielder. I don't think we're going to get much more obscure than that. So, Love it. That's got to be point oh, point oh something. Come on. Point four. Point four. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm shocked. And a, and a, it's funny because he's got a Cardinals hat on, too. Yep. Oh, yeah. 
Um, okay, for for Giants Braves, whenever we can bust out my friend Jim Brower, we should bust out Jim Brower. So Jim Brower was he's he went, play, he's a pitcher for the Gophers. Uh, I consider him a a friend going back a while. He's he was a, a Yankee. He was a Giant. He was a Brave. Yep, Jimmy Love Brower. It. Let's go. Point point oh, Jimmy go. Brower. Jimmy Brower. He deserves more than that, man. That's point oh three. Point. I want to know, does any, is anyone else choosing Jim Brower in that situation? I don't know. Evidently not. Braves, Red Sox. So Craig uh, Kimbrell is going to be a big one there. Yeah. Bartolo Colon works with both these. I will say I that. Braves one will probably be more rare because people do remember him as the Met because he hit yeah, that famous home, that run home run as the Met. Yep. Yeah. And and there's he, more former Twins options for Mets and Red Sox as well. Oh, Met, okay. Mets Mets Red Sox would be like Frankie Viola, um, Minkavich. Minkavich. Doug Minkavich. Minkavich played for both. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Reardon started his career with the Mets, went to the Expos, and then became. A twin Ag Aguilera. I think Rick that uh, started with a Mets. God, did he, yeah, he did. That jerk of a reliever, Addison Reed, also was a Red yep. Sox and a Met. Yep. God, there's a lot of. Yep. There's okay. What what uh, Minkavich has to be, dude. Minkavich. What was what was the first one? Dex uh, Cologne. I Bartolo Cologne. Bartolo, I think, would work He's for so this popular. square. He's so popular though. Steve Avery. Steve Avery. So he was a brave throughout the '90s, and then, yeah, they, and then they ditched him. He went to the Red Sox. It was awful, and this yeah, and that he was got it. lit up. Sayonara, see ya, Steve Avery. St not to be confused with Stephen Avery from I'm about to say that from Netflix uh, series. From nope, nope, nope. Steve Avery. That was guy, a good that pitcher, guy man. looked like a serial killer, man. Steve Avery was a good pitcher. Babe Ruth. Okay, Babe Ruth Bo finished his career with the Braves. Boston oh, Braves. Boston yeah. Braves. Yeah, I think that's gonna be high too. I agree. Okay, let's narrow down. So. We've mentioned Steve Avery for the top left square. Um, Rick Aguilera for Met uh, Red Sox. Is Bartolo Colon remembered for yeah. Braves Red Sox? I, I feel I like think he, so. I think they're so. I feel obscure. like the Mets. Are, the Mets is going to be high for sure. But I like I know he's a popular name, but I don't know. And that people Steve Avery's him. probably high for Braves fans playing this game and even so, Red Sox. Fans. Yeah, good it point. Was like, so yeah, you're we can try Bart. We can try Bart. Just be be under five percent. Give us a shot here. Hello, hello. Give us a shot. One percent. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he was in a household. Certainly not a household mm. Red Sox. No, he wasn't. Okay, for the Red so, so for the Red Sox Met, we've talked about uh, Reardon, Viola, Aguilera. Let's pick a former twin here. Mm -hmm. I would say Aggie or Minkavich, because I or think Minkavich. Viola. I think he's known enough i think those are the most obscure i think aggie i think aggie is going to be a popular choice to phil's point of twins and mets fans mm -hmm. like minkavich bounced he's let's actually a great grid guy let's do dougie plus people can't spell it when they try to type his name in so that's 10 percent of people yeah this will be under two percent point, point seven? seven dude there we go okay do we want to go Silver Sluggers or do we want to go to that Astros Mets square yes. here? Astros Mets, I mean, the most obvious ones are going to be Nolan Ryan, Nolan Ryan, Carlos Beltran, um, Rusty Staub played for both. He was, he was great for both, Rusty but it was Staub. it was Rusty Staub. forty years ago, and and I now might, I mean, he's dead. I don't hate that. The Grand Orange, great chef. Uh, for whatever reason, '90s baseball players. When I was a kid, any like any former twin or cub stands out to me. My, I've told you guys before, we've used him on a Cubs Astro square. I had for whatever reason, Jose Vizcaino was one of my favorite baseball players as a kid. I had like his baseball card and stuff. Yeah. He was. I grew up watching him on WGN, uh, WGN as a as a cub. He then went on to be a Met and an Astro throughout the '90s too. But he's also like one of the most well known utility players on. All of those teams, so he might hmm. he might be higher than Rusty. I would say those are pr two pretty good. Billy Wagner also was a closer for both these organizations. Yeah, but, but he's he's going to be the, the most well known of those three names, right? What's uh, what's your level of confidence in Rusty? 
Oh, it's extremely high. He played for the Expos, the Tigers. I mean, in terms the, of rarity score, rarity score. Oh, um, I mean, it's pre, it, it's it's a long, long time ago. So unless there's a bunch of geriatrics who jumped on to to play this game, I think it's pretty rare. I think, but I, mean, I think this is safe. Okay. I think this is safe. But I mean, I'm I'm not adverse to this guy, you know, too. So both. Let's of them try Rusty. Fair. Let's try Rusty. Both. Of them, I think be under good. five. Under All five. Right. Three. 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 See, so we're the geriatrics silver... aren't doing the grid. No, they don't even know how to log on. So from for we have three silver sluggers <laughs> left, and we're sitting at one, I hate, I hate two. This. We're sitting under five percent rarity this. score with silver sluggers. All right, and Dex, give me options. pictures. There's give a, me pictures. Can I give you? I have a picture option too. All right, yep. for the Astros. Oh, Mike Hampton. Mike Hampton. Mike Hampton won like. Five or six consecutive, was, mostly with the Rockies, but he also, I think he won them across yeah. multiple teams. He's like he one of the best pitch, Love it. Uh, hitting pitchers ever. Love it. Mike Hampton. He had uh, one year, what nice. was he? Oh, there he is, 2%. 2%. One year, really Mike Hampton, who was mostly a an Astro in his career, and, and then he wound up, he wound up with the Rockies on a huge contract. Oh yeah, and was yep. awful as a pitcher because every pitcher in Rockies history is off awful because of the uh, the altitude. But he once with the Rockies hit like eight or nine home runs and hit like he hit over three hundred. He was literally like a designated hitter caliber guy when he was out there. Wow. So okay, okay, okay. So I'm pretty sure this happened. This is not a pitcher, but it's a current former twin. Donnie Barrels, I believe, won the Silver Slugger yeah, in the COVID year. He, uh, he, yep, with the Giants. Yeah. Donnie He's Barrels. A very forgotten, like, Silver Slugger. Like, it might, even though it's like four years no, ago, like, do, do, do people remember yeah. that? Donnie Barrels, yeah, it was uh, his last year because he was Giants, Reds, Twins. But he, uh, he, he hit over 300, like, multiple times. Yeah. So, I mean, that would be, I mean, other Giants options across, there's a lot of just, because uh, we're looking for, like, really good hitters at defensive positions. I believe Mad Bum, too, won a, he was a really good hitter for a pitcher. Ooh. Bob Garner. Matt Williams. Matt, ooh. Matt Williams. Third base. Will Clark. Yeah. I mean, those, those teams were. The, in the late 90s, early 2000s, you had Jeff Kent, Barry Bonds, Rich Aurelia was one of the best hitting shortstops. Oh, Rich Aurelia. Buster Posey, obviously. Yep. Um, I mean, that's a good list. Yeah, I do. Rem I do remember uh, when the twins when the twins signed or traded for how they acquired Donnie Barrels. I do remember being shocked that he won a Silver mm -hmm. Slugger, but that's probably the I'm lowest one. That one. I would say yeah. that one or like Matt Williams. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Barrels is going to be taken. Donovan. Don Barrels. Oh my God! Point six. Point nice. Yeah. What is it? Look point, at that. I can't read that. Point six. Point, point six. six. Man. And look at that smile. He's just so happy to be on this grid. <laughs> point. Okay. The Red Sox historically since right. 1980 have a ton of options here, right? You got D David Ortiz. Yeah. I think they gave out Silver Sluggers for DH yep. in the American League. Manny Ramirez likely. Nomar. Noma. The the rare or the Boggs. ones that are like forgotten are like Veritech. Um, I think Jacoby Ellsbury and like like he almost won MVP one year at the Red mm -hmm. Sox. Yep. Ellsbury would would he work probably should have won it over Morno actually that that yeah. six year. Did yeah. Pedroia, Mike Greenwell in left field might have won one. Who else? And Mike Greenwell we've used a couple times before. He's like the for, of all these hitters, he was a great hitter in like the late eighties early nineties for the Red Sox. A, yeah, it was good. And nobody talks about him because Mo Vaughn was the best hitter on that team, which Mo Vaughn would be another option. Ooh, that's good. Well, Mo Vaughn's interesting. I think Mo Vaughn's forgotten as far as we could have used Poppy. him on the on the Mets square Mets. too. But mm -hmm. Poor guy. I think in general of all of all these names that you could throw out the last like twenty years, thirty years of Red Sox, I, I we've used and we've used him a couple times for like. I don't know what the categories were, like 100 RBIs or whatever, but Mike Greenwell. Mike Greenwell's a forgotten man. Okay. Are, are yeah. you pretty 
just to make sure, are you pretty sure he won one? Like I, I would think I mean, he did, he was but like, I'm really bad at this part. I don't trust um, myself. A lot I of mean, times. he was. I, I am confident that in his probably seven years or whatever with the Red Sox, that he was legitimately one of the best hitting okay. outfielders. He was really good. I just, I'm really bad at this part of it, and I don't want to sabotage our chances. No, you're good. I think you're All good right. here. Okay, right, Mike Greenwell. Oh, so yeah. he played one like time. 10 years. Yeah, he's good. Now we're good. We're good here. Mikey Green, Mikey G. Yeah. Oh my God! Let's go. Oh my God! I think that beats the thirteen. That's great. Oh my God! Oh, two oh, percent on Mike Greenwell. Yep. Let's look him up real quick here. Mike Greenwell. Mike Greenwell reference. He. Okay, he he only won one Silver Slugger. So uh, we, were, we were living on I, the edge. But he was a multi-time All Star. You know what? Actually, Mike Greenwell. He was. Uh, we were living on the edge there a little bit. Uh, he he was a really good player, but he really peaked for like two or three years. I thought it was yep. more like a five, six year peak into the mid nineties. Well, he I'm played he into the mid nineties, but his peak was was much more like a three year, four year, maybe three year peak. So, anyhow, bank That's it. We got Mike Mike Greenwell for an obscure hundred RBI Red Sox, an obscure Silver Slugger, uh, All Star, three hundred hitter as well. Bank just. Keep banking this this stuff for later. Some good former twins in that. Yeah, if we can if we can use former twins for as many squares as possible, that's the oh I love that's yeah, the holy grail here. But all right, I know you guys got to run here to uh, a little purple daily purple access. So yeah. thank you guys for hanging out with us here, Score North Twin Show during hot stove season or cold stove season. This is kind of what it's shaping up to be. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>